This is a video on weak bases and base ionization constants. And of course, it's going to look a lot like weak acids and acid ionization constants. So here represents a particular weak base. This is ammonia, NH3. And remember, it's going to act like a base because it's going to accept a proton from the water molecule. When it accepts that proton, it forms NH4 plus and OH minus. Unfortunately, unlike acids, we cannot remove the H2O out of this because we need the H2O in there because it is the thing that is losing the proton. Because remember, when we write these equations, we want to make sure that we show what's happening with the proton. And that's why with acids, we can write the equation without the water molecule because we just want to show what's happening with the proton. But with bases, we can't because the water molecule has to be involved because it's the thing that's losing the proton. Of course, we can write an equilibrium expression for this particular equation. And of course, it's going to be the concentration of the NH4+, plus, which is one of the products at equilibrium, of course, times the OH- minus concentration at equilibrium divided by the NH3 concentration at equilibrium. And of course, we don't include the water because it's a liquid. And it's a specialized K sub C, since it's specific for bases. It's called the K sub B, which is the acid base ionization constant. So the greater the K sub B is, therefore the stronger the base is going to be, of course. So again, very similar to what we talked about with the weak ionization constants or the base ionization very similar to the acid ionization constants. Solve weak base problems like we solve weak acid problems, except we solve for OH minus instead of H plus. Very simple. And here is a chart that shows a whole bunch of different bases and their KBs. And then remember before, in a previous video, we looked at a particular chart in which they were showing a bunch of acids and their KAs. And then on the other char side of the chart, we had their conjugate base and their KBs. Well, now we understand what a KB is. Now, in this chart, here's a bunch of bases and their conjugate acids and their associated K sub A's. And of course, we see that urea is one of our weakest bases here. 1.5 times to the negative 14th is its K sub B. But of course, its conjugate acid is relatively strong. 0.67 is its Ka, so that's a fairly strong acid. And again, the larger the K sub B is, the stronger the base, and the weaker its conjugate acid is going to be. And the smaller the K sub B is, the weaker the base, and the stronger its conjugate acid is going to be. Ionization constants of conjugate acid-base pairs. Here is an acid, right? It's a generic acid. HA is in equilibrium with H plus and A minus. It's a weak acid, of course. And here's its conjugate base, which, as you saw from the previous chart, depending upon the strength of the acid, the conjugate base is going to have some kind of considerable significant strength so that the conjugate base can actually act like a base in solution. So if we took A minus and put it in water, it's going to act like a base and it's going to accept a proton from the water molecule to make the OH minus and the HA. And of course, as we see, there's a Ka for our acid, and there's a Kb for its conjugate base. As it turns out, my friends, when we take these two equations and add them up, the A minus cancels out with the A minus, and the HA cancels out with the HA. And what do we have left? Well, we've got H2O, we've got H plus, and we've got OH minus which is the auto-ionization of water. And we know from a previous slide that that has its own K, and that's the K sub W. So apparently, from what we know about uh, equilibria, if we take these two and they add up to be this third one here, the value of the K for this has to be equal to what? Well, it has to be equal to the product of the Ka times the Kb. So it turns out that the Ka of an acid and the Kb, if it's conjugate base, when we multiply them, they become equal to the K sub W. Or the Kb of a base multiplied times the Ka of its conjugate acid becomes equal to the K sub W. Again, um, be careful. You have to realize that it is the Ka of a specific acid and the Kb of its conjugate base. You can't just take the Ka of an acid and 
take the KB of some random base and multiply them out and get the K sub W. It has to be the KA of the acid and the KB if it's conjugate or the KB of the base and the KA of its conjugate. Weak acid and its conjugate base. KA is equal to the KW divided by the KB. And the KB is equal to KW divided by the KA, which of course I'm sure you would already assume and know. So here's a nice another list of KAs and KBs for different substances. And you know, you can give it a try. Take a particular pick a particular substance, take the KA, here's its conjugate base, multiply it times its KB, see what you get. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. It's a very short video. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see examples in the text, you can look in the text, or of course you can ask me uh, in class. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.